The VCR is a great piece of technology with a terrible user interface so that most people who own one don't take advantage of its full functionality. That's why someone invented the VCR Plus, a front end that makes it easier to use. Well, the same could be said about database software. Very powerful, but generally difficult to use, except the same change is taking place there with the development of a much friendlier user environment. Today, we'll take a look at, believe it or not, easy to use database programs. When you think of Astro, or as I like to call it, what comes to mind? Beyond whiteboards, it's most likely it's love and care for content-driven websites. This, after all, is the fundamental problem that Astro was created to solve. I think one of our big kind of why should this exist was realizing there was this hole in the entire open source kind of developer tool space for content focused sites. So you had your Next.js, your Svelte kit, your Nuts, like everyone had this like app focused story around, um, you know, really, really powerful, really, really like data intensive. How quickly can your site render? And are you bridging the gap between data loading on the server and client? And meanwhile, um, everyone's like first starter tutorial on one of those doc sites was a blog. And it was just like a total mismatch to us that there'd be these like tools that were for like building the next Facebook. And then nothing really in that middle space for the content web, which ends up being a large portion of the web. It just all came down to this problem we were trying to solve. And it was really specific to content and working with content and building content sites. This care for content became even more apparent with Astro V2 and the release of content collections which you can think of as adding type safety and all the benefits that come with it to your markdown. We actually, I'd say, started this story about a year ago with content collection. So originally we launched this idea of working with local content, so markdown. And if you're building a site that has a lot of markdown, instead of like grab it all from the file system, render it, you hope you're like not missing in one of those files, one like front matter piece that's you know not there and it causes the whole thing to break. We added this really nice flow for type safe and markdown. We're going to schema validate everything. If you're missing something in one file across thousands, we're going to tell you exactly where that problem is. This field's missing, or it's this type that you weren't expecting, like super, super detailed and really great developer experience for working with local content. But even after content collections, they still felt it. There's something missing the globe. Yes, Astro and content collections made working with local content easier, but in the real world, not all content is local. And even more than that, at the end of the day, content is just data, which led them to the question. What if you combine a database with an actual framework and you have a whole ecosystem that can actually talk to a database and kind of build with that, assuming it exists? Like, what does that unlock? Is a really, really interesting question. Now, this isn't a new idea. After all, WordPress powers 45% of the web with a similar concept. In this world, you're not just managing your article content, you're managing data, pages, blocks, images, and an entire ecosystem of plugins. The question is, after making Gatsby the good parts, could Astro capture lightning in a bottle again and make WordPress? The good parts. The biggest blocker, as the famous poet Snake Plissken famously said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Databases, and specifically the development and production environments around them, are inherently complex. This is at odds with the fundamental principle of Astro, simplicity. Yeah, what really came down to is if we're going to build a database primitive into Astro itself, we need a great local development story. There's no, there's no way to like force every one of our users who's had this really clean, simple developer experience to start installing local Postgres or installing Docker and managing their databases. We needed an experience that would work across production and dev that wouldn't make you want to pull your hair out. By making the developer experience one of the primary requirements of a database primitive, Astro automatically ruled out most of their options. And at the end of the day, there was just one left, Firebase. That's a joke. But they did do what any of us would do given the same resources and a big decision to make. They went to Copenhagen and took copious amounts of illicit drugs to figure it out. It was spring of last year, so we were all in Copenhagen. We had like a core maintainer's offsite. So anyone who's a core maintainer in an open source community, we all got together in Copenhagen. And that was where Erica, one of our core maintainers, was like brought up this idea of what if we took content collections, because that's all we had at the time, and replaced it internally. We we're basically, what if we could build sorting and filtering and realize like, oh my God, we're just building a database. What if we just use SQLite? Because SQLite is a lightweight file-based self-contained database, it would be possible to build it directly into Astro itself and is perfect for the read-heavy workloads of most content-driven websites. The problem is that while SQLite files work well with immutable data, you still need to handle cases where data can be written to and thus keeping them in sync. They'd also need to build out infrastructure to handle disaster recovery, replication, and many other things you'd expect from a traditional database. And beyond all of that, there is still one major problem, DX. Ultimately, at the time, there was not really enough there to work with. The ecosystem around SQLite is so developed around the Node ecosystem specifically, it's really yeah, out of date was almost the feeling, kind of dated. There was these like really heavy native C++ node bindings that you had to build every time you installed the package. So that seamless MTM install experience becomes like a, oh God, my C++ binary didn't 
compile perfectly for me personally, just that SQLite um, story was was really still kind of feeling um, very dated at the time. So we couldn't find a way that we could deliver on developer experience that we thought would be uh, our, developer, our users would love. And ultimately, yeah, we shelved it. Now, I will admit, I'm a little upset that we'll never get to see what happens when a JavaScript developer realizes their C++ binary failed to compile. But alas, back to the story. At this point, the Astro team was confident that SQLite was the right primitive to build on, but clearly they couldn't just ship SQLite itself. They either needed to build around it or find someone else who already had. This led them, as most things do, to Cloudflare. We have a strong connection with the Cloudflare team. So they were our first connection to this, like, okay, SQLite, local dev, but what's our hosting story like? And, and we started with Cloudflare, but um, ultimately where they were going with their product didn't really make sense for us. It was really tied to the worker runtime. So not only do we have to spin up databases for our users, but we'd also have to spin up workers and manage that like extra layer of abstraction where they were binding to each other. And what if we want to update the like the communication layer, the worker itself, it's actually, we have thousands of workers, not just one single one. It was a model that didn't really work well for us and, and what we were building with a centralized kind of routing system for the databases. So when we were talking about what would it take to bring this into the local development store, we'd either have to bundle the Wrangler, you know, worker D, the, the Cloudflare experience proprietary code into Astro itself, or we'd have to risk having SQLite in development and D1 in production and whatever mismatch happens would be on the users ultimately. And we never really could get comfortable with that. So for those two reasons, we were really excited about Cloudflare, but when we actually went for our exact use case, it just didn't deliver on, on what we needed. Now with Cloudflare out of the picture, Astro's options were getting thin, but unbeknownst to them, another team was working on this exact problem. That team was Terso and their solution was LibSQL, a fork of SQLite. Now you're probably thinking a fork, that seems dramatic. And it is, but they didn't have many options. Although SQLite is open source, it's not open contribution. And beyond that, their focus remains on giving you the best local embedded database experience, which they've done. By forking, the Terso team could preserve all of the features of SQLite that made it the most deployed database of the past, while adding modern features to potentially make LibSQL the most deployed database of the future. Things like replication, which enables the synchronization of SQLite files across the network, and its own HTTP-based protocol, which allows you to access the database from serverless environments. And best of all, these features just happen to also be exactly what the Astro team was looking for. Yeah, so we were in trouble because we didn't really know what to build this on. We, like all the pieces were there, but we didn't know how to fit them together for really seamless experience. And that's where Terso really came in and kind of saved the day for us. So on one hand, in the local developer experience, there was this modern client, this essentially NPM package that didn't have a heavy install. It felt really lightweight. It has a Wasm build, so we could actually run it in Stackblitz, which is an important use case for us to actually run in the browser. Um, it was this modern client, um, essentially driver for the database that we could build on top of that our users would love. So that was kind of big thing number one. Um, number two was it came with this Terso hosting platform. So LibSQL and Terso had this kind of uh, hosting platform that we could rely on and kind of build on top of, where we didn't have to go and build SQLite hosting. We could actually rely on essentially the pros that people had built LibSQL to actually run um, this database platform, not just run databases for us, but like at the scale that we knew we'd need. Um, building a database platform, not just a database, we needed potentially hundreds of thousands, millions of databases. And um, seeing Terso, again, building for that exact use case um, felt like a really good fit. Um, yeah, and then lastly, it was just a really simple platform to get started on. So um, unlike some of the um, difficulties with a lot of abstraction, it was just like, you need a database, you got a database. How many you want, spin them up. It was really, really like exactly what we needed in terms of how the like database per tenant, the database per user kind of model where so many other platforms think of databases, it's like, all right, here's your database. And like, you throw it on the table. It's like this one big uh, operation. And with Terso, it was like so streamlined for just creating databases, but running those databases at a scale that no one else was really offering um, in our experience, having really looked for this. So yeah, it was just kind of a total slam dunk in terms of what we were looking for and what we were trying to deliver to our users. Terso really came in and, and met those needs. By building on top of Terso and LibSQL, the Astro team was able to deeply integrate an efficient, local first, replicable database directly into Astro. And they called it, fittingly, AstroDB. So it is at a high level, a database that is directly built into Astro. Um, it's local first, so everything is local. There's no like, you just wanna do some local development. You just wanna build an SSG. You actually don't need to like talk to a hosted database. At its core, it's this like local database layer that is built into Astro and doesn't require all the like, normal fiddling that like, I don't know, I hate local development on a database. It's like spinning up Docker and okay, like get Postgres or MySQL. Like this is some like heavy tech and it's running on my local machine and my memory just slowed down and why right. um, this is super lightweight. It's this really, really cool database layer that we can talk about and what it's powered by. But at the end of the day, 
local first. And then when you want to go to production, we built out a hosting platform for databases um, so that you can just easily connect to that when you go to production. We handle all the scaling and set up for you. And uh, yeah, it's this really nice model of hosted and local kind of working together. And the best part, because of this architecture, the free plan is incredibly generous and there's no incentive for them to remove it. For us, making it affordable was a big thing. And right. really that came down to efficiency. So one thing we love about LiveSQL is that it's essentially a modern fork of SQLite, which means that it's not this heavy runtime. It's essentially at rest. Besides the storage of the data, there's no like server that's running. There's no, all right, this free plan has a five second spin up and a five second slowdown. And like, if you don't use it for a week, we're going to kill it. And you have to restart it. Mm -hmm. Like all these things that are really ergonomic, like terrible experiences don't come from a place really of like, we're trying to build the best product. They come from a place of like, we have this thing we offered you and it's expensive and we are mitigating that as much as we can. But for us, we knew that this was so important. We designed the entire system. It only works in my mind at scale into the future because the tech we chose isn't expensive to run in a free plan. It, and, it's and free at rest. It's zero dollars at rest. And then it scales up as you hit a bunch of traffic. It's really, really cool tech. And it's yeah, all powered yeah. by Terso and, and LibSQL. This program has been made possible by Bytes.dev, the best JavaScript newsletter in the world and viewers like you.